The downside to beginning a keto journey is the keto flu. And this is where a lot of people sort of fall down. So the keto flu is, uh, your body's going through a detoxification phase, but to understand how that works, we need to understand that high blood pressure or essential hypertension is an insulin dependent state. It's caused through elevated insulin. So when we look at, um, we're quite often told by you know, medical professionals to stay away, and as a society in general, to avoid our sodium. Sodium is essential for life. We can't live without it. And, and this study looked at, uh, this covered 100,000 participants over 17 countries, and this measured the sodium excretion. Um, so this is the amount of sodium that was excreted from the body. So we can, we can assume that what was excreted was at least what was consumed. And what this shows is that the optimal sort of area of you is between four to six grams of sodium, or 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams of salt. Anything below 2,000 milligrams, increased risk of death. So a massive increase in risk of uh, all-cause mortality. Now to get that sweet spot, that 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams of sodium per day, if you were to obtain that from table salt, because table salt is less than 40% sodium, you would need to consume 15 tablespoons of salt. So that's an awful lot of salt. And we're told to avoid it. Sometimes for good reason, a lot of processed foods are very high in salts, but when you become ketogenic, you're restricting all of these processed foods and you're eating real food, you're eating natural food, you're eating foods that don't naturally contain high levels of these electrolytes. So sodium is essential for life. When we begin a ketogenic journey, as I just showed you earlier, or even sort of low carb, this, this lowers our insulin. Now, the way that um, sort of essential hypertension works is that in, in, a, in an elevated insulin state, in, in a state of insulin resistance, we, we, we're told to, to sort of cut out this sodium. So we drop the sodium, but sodium is essential for life. So the insulin will pull sodium from four points in the nephrons in the kidney back into the blood to keep us alive. Wherever sodium goes, water follows, which leads to further, further sort of high blood pressure. And this is what's sort of happening when we begin a keto journey. So the, the drop in insulin signals the kidneys uh, to release sodium from the body. The sodium is expelled and we go through what's called the keto flu, also or used to be known as the Atkins flu. Uh, and this is where we get uh, headaches, we feel nauseous, um, you can feel sick, uh, really tired. And it's a whole world of unpleasantness. And this is where most people fail. And it's through poor preparation. It's through the lack of understanding how important these electrolytes are for us, these salts. Salts are essential for life. So this is my keto rule number four. Consume lots of electrolytes. So these are the, the electrolytes that you guys have been, um, been drinking this evening. Uh, we believe to be one of the highest, uh, best electrolytes on the market, one of the highest qualities. Now the natural sources, the two best natural sources in my opinion, are the pink Himalayan and the Celtic sea salt. But whatever you decide to eat, if you know, whether you're supplementing with electrolytes or whether you're going down the route of, of using pink Himalayan or Celtic sea salt, you need to get lots of electrolytes in.